Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Kreuzman, and welcome to our next uh, session. This one is called, What Causes Long COVID? I didn't intend to do a secondary or part two video on, um, on long COVID symptoms, um, but because of your questions, um, I decided to go ahead and uh, do it. So what are the current hypotheses? Now, these are hypotheses, they're not fact, they're not definite. These are thoughts of what can cause or can cause long COVID. Um, one is autoimmune response. Uh, the next one is persistent virus, that is the virus still causing the problems. Um, the third one is from chronic inflammation. And the fourth one is from microclots. Um, what about dysautonomia? Um, that's kind of a fifth hypothesis. Um, there's a large website dedicated specifically to this autonomia linked to long COVID. I listed it right there. Um, as you know, I'm a big proponent of the Stella Ganglion block doing the dual block at C4 and at C6 uh, for the injection. Um, also the vagus nerve stimulation using the TENS unit. And of course, the vagus, vagus nerve um, based exercises. So does COVID-19 directly cause this autonomia? We don't know. Um, or does this autonomia put you at risk for developing uh, long COVID? Again, we don't know. Um, does the dysautonomia cause the cytokine storm? Or does the cytokine storm cause the dysautonomia? That's the rub, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, we're still not quite sure. And could the autonomic, uh, I'm sorry, the autoimmune system um, be responsible for causing the dysautonomia? I know there's more questions than answers, but let's look at what the autoimmune response really is. So your immune system is working normally. That is what it's supposed to do. It is supposed to defend you against foreign pathogens, toxins, and irritants. Uh, however, either because something looks very similar to something in your body or there is a mutation that causes your body to no longer recognize a part of itself. Um, that's basically what autoimmunity is. You start producing autoimmune antibodies. These antibodies can be against a protein that you produce, against a receptor, or against a, a chemical or, or protein that's in your, in your body. Um, these are known uh, conditions that cause or are essentially called autoimmune. Um, seasonal allergies or allergies to peanuts, to shellfish, um, to bees, all of these are considered autoimmune. Hashimoto's disease, that's a problem with the thyroid being too low because the, the antibody is attacking a part of the thyroid. Uh, Graves' disease is the opposite. It also involves the thyroid, but it, the antibody causes the thyroid to release more thyroid hormone. Type 1 diabetes mellitus, who knew, um, is caused by an autoimmune situation. Multiple sclerosis now is known to be a result of autoimmune problem. Myasthenia gravis, where it attacks um, the neuromuscular junction, causes weakness in the face, sometimes even breathing. Uh, Sjogren's syndrome usually affects the face, uh, salivary glands and eyes, you get dry eyes, dry mouth, um, that sort of stuff. Psoriasis, uh, both skin plaques and also affecting joints. Rheumatoid arthritis, that's a big one. Um, causes the synovium or the surrounding part of the joint to overgrow because of the irritation from the antibodies. Uh, celiac disease, um, people know is a reaction to, uh, to gluten. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is an inflammatory disease of the bowel. And uh, of course, eczema is allergy related. So this is kind of what uh, the whole system looks like. Um, we're, we're talking about the immune system plus the, um, the way antibodies respond and react and all of these mediators that are involved in this entire process, interleukins, tumor necrosis factor. I mean, there's just a lot of things happening. I like to think of it like an assembly line. 
Um, all it takes is one person in this in this assembly line to not do the right thing, and uh, the whole the whole process falls apart. It doesn't doesn't do well. So that's essentially how um, both the immune system inflammation and the clotting cascade work. There's managers overseeing and telling people to stop. There's bosses and administrators of them that make them go or stop or use a different part. Um, so that's essentially kind of how I look at this whole system. So what's involved? What is inflammation in general? So um, the short of it is, is you need inflammation. Inflammation is necessary not only to get rid of um, something that's uh, foreign to you or dangerous to you that needs to be removed, um, but it's also involved in healing. And there's two main categories for this. And even, even though I simplified this, um, it's, still, it's still a headache to try to get through. So the short of it is, is that there's inflammatory mediators and there's inflammatory cells. That's what's involved. So things like cytokines, they tell the white blood cells or the inflammatory cells to be produced. They're, they're, they're encouraged to make more of them. Whereas chemokines basically correct uh, and tell where these white blood cells need to go. So there's a lot of substances that are involved, including interleukins, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, histamine, um, serotonin, um, and I'll get to thrombin here in a minute, and um, tumor necrosis factor. So all of these, there's many, many interleukins, there's dozens, there's many prostaglandins, there's leukotrienes. So when we say inflammation, well, what are we really targeting? It's a very large um, kind of pool to target. And when we say anti-inflammatory, it may only affect one part of this inflammation process, but not the others. And because there's so many cells involved, for instance, there's many different T cells that have different functions. Um, and because there's so many different cells that are involved in either releasing these mediators or responding to these mediators, it's a very complicated system. Clotting is absolutely involved with inflammation. That's why I have the thrombin listed right here. When clotting starts, it promotes inflammation. And again, the, the point of inflammation here is, is to correct and heal. Uh, it's when it becomes chronic is when it becomes a problem. Dysautonomia is linked to inflammation. Sympathetic overdrive or high sympathetic tone is linked to inflammation. So all of these systems work together. Um, and that's part of what the problem is with um, with, uh, with long COVID. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was somewhat enlightening. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I will try to do another video on targeting specifically um, gut health next time.